It's another day, another sunny day, another dry day, which is what we hoped for. It's very grey clouds for a dry day. Right, what's the plan? We're going to insulate the walls. So we have, we have sheep's wool and wood fibre board. We're a little bit concerned that we can't do the sheep's wool without the wood fibre board because it's basically going to hold it in place. Brought the trailer around as a giant table to work on. That'd be, that'd be enough. It's got a felt side and a normal side. It said the felted side is on the internal. I'd say it's fluffier, isn't it? What? So th this side is just the same. It's just the same layers. But on here, there's a... A thick feel it it's like a felted layer so it's more knitted together and that's not on there no i would say that's looser but okay. i don't know but well that's that's what they're saying so we're going to measure up i've still got to do a, another couple of osb bits here but jay's going to start on that corner so i guess we should measure because they're all going to be the same yeah It took 10 15 minutes to bring around some scaffolding. Not vital. And Anne brought everything around. Yes, you should put kickboards and endless more handrails and stuff, but it's a damn sight safer than working on the ladder. Now, the tongue and groove, we're going to start at the bottom, work up, and then the offcut from there will probably start on a different wall. I don't really want too much wastage. They're relatively lightweight, but we are going to sit them on a batten at the bottom. Right, first board is up. We've leveled it off on that batten on the bottom. This plastic space is kind of what you would use if you were putting PIR insulation. It's okay, but it's sticking out a bit. And we're gonna be putting battens over the top of this. I think it might just get in the way. So we're trying something different. We found these, well, I can't remember what they're called now, dome flathead something nails from tool station. I think if we tap them in enough, Spring remember what are they called? spring head nails i think they're designed for this sort of thing but they're just going to hold it in until the battens i think they will pierce the stuff well jay doesn't think it's going to work i do grab a hammer you can whack one in that's you think annie's going to hit it further aren't yeah I? until it's flush yeah it's not so like it's, yeah, but it's not like plasterboard where you've once you punch the paper, it's thin. This is the same density all the way through. That's solid. Whereas here, however much you screw that, the screw will just pull through the plastic and snap it. That plastic will never go in. No, I know that. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's the way forward. Still undecided if we're going to leave a timber in at the bottom. This is 38 mil. This is 40, so it's about right. And it just means that when the batten comes down, we can screw in the last fi fixing to that. And then the cladding will overshoot down to the bottom of the chassis.
my cut edge I'm gonna use at the other end. The thing with this cord is we don't need it to fall on studs. These are really random length anyway. So we, uh, it's unlike flooring or something like that. So we can just start wherever. It is beginning to look more like a building. Although we didn't put much design thought into this end of the building because it was just going to be facing the trees. Uh, so we've kind of started on the ugliest end. What I'm going to do now is going to work all the way along this wall and there's a natural break at the front door. At this point here, which we still need to trim back. Which means we can do, like we're doing flooring, we can start at that end, run all the way along, and then work out, I think it's gonna be so much quicker. Same thing with the sheep's wool, we're putting it in kind of temporarily, it's tacked at the top, and then as we put the boards in, we can get it all nice. Rather than trying to get it all perfect and then things bunch up and move. Biggest change on this elevation is that we've put a string line here and a timber, which means we've measured down so that our second board finishes flush with the cell. Zero cutting. So I'm clinging on to what shade I've got left here, this side of the building, and getting all the insulation in. It's going okay. We're kind of, well, it's definitely better acoustic now. Now it's still struggling a little bit on spacings. We've got 400 millimeter sensors on CLS size dub work. So that's a 360 mil gap. These are 380, or they're meant to be. So 10 mil, you know, you would think, okay, that's about right to make sure it friction fits. The problem is some of these are coming in a bit bigger than 380, nearer 400. And because of the way that they are, and they're, they're not a slab, but equally they're not that fluffy, so they hold themselves quite nicely. But as soon as you tuck them in a bit too much, you can see here it starts waving. And I just think, I mean, I'm not sure quite what we can do, but I'm not going to start cutting 20 mil off. It would be... A, Maybe, it's, maybe it is a case of giving them a tug down. I mean, we are being fussy here, but at the end of the day, you don't want cold spots in your wall. And if you're gonna do it, you may as well do it properly. This sort of, I mean, we've got insulation on the outside, so it's not, it's not as drastic as it could be if you were insulating and then just cladding straight on here and you were doing this. Because here you've got no insulation and that's just a cold spot all the way through. So we wanna make sure that we've got the, the full thickness which is lovely, I mean, look at it, it's really nice stuff to work with. You know, tight against the stud. It's just how we arrange it. But because we're starting with those wood fibre boards at the bottom, it means that we can check as we go and arrange it. Now, because it's 100% sheep's wool, supposedly, one of the properties is that it's not gonna drop and sag like some other fibres. So that's good to know. And yes, we're putting in a couple of staples, but mainly at the top, just literally tacking it on the edge like that 
and then let's just belt some braces. These are just over 100 mil of thickness. Our studs are 89, so we're getting that nice little bit of compression to hold it in. And the wood fiber boards have got so much friction, you've actually got to be careful when you put them on and then slide them into the tongue and groove, it, it can actually do this and pull the wool with it. So. So Joe's been busy doing most of this. Uh, she's not here. I'll do the explainer. So we're, they come in six meter rolls in a pack of three. And we've done it, so we butt it up against the end of the trailer bed, roll it out. And this is the bit that we've kind of learned along the way. So all we've done is because it's obviously quite compressed in that roll, you can see just by, it pulls out quite a bit without reducing the thickness. We're still over 100 mil. And then we've got a mark here. So I'm just tearing it a fraction over the line. We started off doing cutting with a board, getting it really accurate. But look, I mean, it's, it's tearing. It tears pretty square like that. And by the time you actually get it in place, you can adjust it and tweak it in such a way that you've got it tight to the bottom. That's my biggest plus point though, not itchy at all. Just like hugging a sheep. Right, finally time to get on with the wood fibre boards. We are working, well, hopefully in the shade this side and then I'll go around and finish what I didn't finish yesterday. As we did on the other far wall, the timber's there. So we should end up with a full board finishing on our window and we'll take this one right beyond the corner. On the third course now, I had to do a bit of messing around down the other end. Hands up, I might have messed up the string line. Only by a little bit, but it just was, I mean, we were probably 10 mil too, too high. So that idea of getting them to line up with a sill, I had to go back in and sort that out. Anyway, I'm trying to get back onto track now. So we're on the third course and I've got an off cut from the other end. So we'll start up here and we'll run out of those nails. I kind of like the nails. But fortunately, I'd already ordered these, which I think we looked at yesterday. They, I stopped using them. We did two, and then we thought they would protrude too much and kind of get in the way of the battens. Turns out I was using them the wrong way round, I, I think. There's this star-shaped profile on one side, and it's flat on the other. And because there's a hole there, I'd assumed that, that the head of the screw sat inside that hole. However, when you look at them, they're kind of flying saucer shaped. And therefore, when you use it that way, these ribs on there grip into the insulation, pull it in and still hide the screw hole. Right, it's a 6 a.m. start today. Well, it's not 6 a.m. anymore, nearer 7, but it's the only way we're going to get it done this week because it's a hot one. Right, I'm going to carry on where I left off on Friday. Start here, work along. Got LFT missing here for some reason. I think it was because I jumped to a whole sheet, but I'm not going to let that stop me. I'm just going to carry on insulating. We'll deal with it from the other side.
Joe had already pre-cut a lot of this insulation, I think, so that's fine. That's one, two, three, two, three, to another over the here. We got there in the end. I'm still waiting on that end wall to go up, which will carry our glue lamb beam over this half of the building. But the majority of it is now done. We've of course still got insulation to go into the roof. There's a couple of different approaches we've got going on up there. But this was a good example of just trying new things and trying to move to a different sort of approach to insulating the buildings. The more renewable and sustainable stuff. <laughs> Almost the same. Of course, there are a load of new technology uh, and more modern alternatives, but there's just something nice about working with the sort of materials. And I think this just gave us the ideal opportunities to try them out before we get onto a bigger build in the future. Uh, I will leave a link to everything down in the description. Uh, we were just punters, so we bought all these products. This was from a company called Sheep, Sheep Wool Insulation, uh, and it's the only 100% stuff that we could find a lot of the other stuff is blended with plastic um, and then the wood fiber boards again endless suppliers and manufacturers of this stuff we found a company called back to earth down in devon and they stock a, a variety of different brands that i don't think they're fixed to one uh, and this is the one that they suggested of course you can go way thicker with this stuff and if you were going to try and hit a certain u value then you'd be really beefing up this stuff. Um, also the detailing, a lot of people just lime, render and plaster straight onto this, which I really want to try. Can you stop eating this sheep's wool dog? But uh, in our situation, we're cladding it. So I think if you were going to lime, render it uh, on the outside, then you would put a lot more fixings in and make sure everything was exactly right, ready for your beads. Um, but in our situation, we're using it more as that thermal break and it really does give some thermal mass to the building. When you insulate something with just foam, <laughs> she's like munching on sheep's wool. If you insulate something with just foam, then it might heat up quick, but it cools down rapidly. This sort of mass uh, should hold a little bit more of a stable temperature in here. So hoping that that was a good route to go. And finally, for those of you who are going to worry and comment about sheep's wool insulation um, and moths and things like that, it really isn't. I mean, we used a different sheep's wool in the last house and we never had any issues. That one was treated uh, with borax, I think, um, and it was the blend. So it had like 10% polyester. All the scraps we've just put in our compost heap, uh, or you could use it for mulching around trees or all sorts of things. The fact that this is 100%, you know, that's that's great. We're not putting any plastic in the compost heap. The type of wool we've used is an actual fact. It's not treated in any way other than the process that it goes through, which makes it kind of inert and non-attractive to moth. So there is no chemicals, no nothing, no treatment in this at all. It's simply the process. I should probably find out more on that. 
I can't remember quite what it's called. It's not lasers, but it is probably heat or something like that. Uh, basically makes it, treats it, but physically rather than chemically. And there will bound to be comments about fire. This is really uh, just chars and this stuff, you know, sheep's wool is well known for being very, very good from a fire perspective. That's why furniture and clothing and mattresses and stuff um, often perform way better in a, if there is a fire, if they're made from wool rather than polyester and foams and all sorts of new stuff. So. Anyway, there we go. Life's an experiment. And the benefit of this cabin is we get to try it all out. And you guys don't have to. Uh, we can you know, practice these different methods on it. As you can see behind me, big blue window means we've membrane and battened on the outside a little bit more to finish on that. And then we're working on the roof. All that should happen this week. And my genie lifts are coming so I can get this uh, big blue lamp beam up as well. So hopefully, well, should, it, editing providing, we should have two or three more videos coming out this week. Thank you for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself and we'll see you next time.